E te iwi e tā wharau tia mai ki te kore he whaka ki te ngā mai kā mate te iwi e. Ko wai hei rangatira mō tātou, ko wai, ko wai, ko tātou anō. Ko te hui tēnei e tā wharau nei a tātou i tēnei wā. This week on The Hui. Up in smoke, the government is set to repeal key smoke-free reforms. We talk tobacco harm and the impacts of this backward step on tangata whenua. It's just devastating that a government has put profit over people. Plus, taking the traditional forward, we see how a passion for tukutuku turned into a thriving online business. I would sell out and make $26,000. And I know it will never be lost because they're here to carry it through. Ngā mate o te wā o te rā, tu a tini tu a mano haramai haere. Tātou e mahu i honei ki tā hātanga o te whenua ti he wa mauri ora and welcome back to the hui. Changes to anti-smoking legislation rushed through last month have left a bad taste in the mouths of many Māori health workers. They want to see smoking stubbed out for good and fear the coalition government's actions will leave many whānau addicted for longer. Mēnei te pūrongo, Ameriana Johnson. The habit that has its hooks in Māori. While the overall adult smoking rate is just under 7%, for Māori, it's 17. I've seen the harm it's done. Um, my parents, who were smokers, um, lifelong smokers, um, the expense it, uh, it was, and how it affected them because they end up with emphysema from the smoking. Both so, of them ended both up. Of them. So, yeah, it was pretty hard on our family. Thankfully, most of my whānau have turned to vapes. Our smoking is just getting a bit too expensive, and I think it's more for our tamariki, eh? you know, because I'm not that saying that vapes any better. Many young people, they just want to try it, but, like, sometimes when they try it, they can't get off it. So if they don't have it in the first place to try it that young, I think it's good for the government to stop it so they don't get hooked too early. I wouldn't want my children to smoke, all my mokos to smoke. I think how the laws were before with the gradual increase in age and able to buy smokes was good. So those that were growing up now wouldn't have the chance to buy smokes or purchase it. Praised by health officials internationally, new smoke-free laws have now been scrapped. They included slashing the number of outlets that could sell cigarettes, removing most nicotine from them, and creating a smoke-free generation. But now, that's all gone up in smoke. The last government was moving towards an untested regime with a focus on prohibition. Minister in charge of the law change, Casey Costello. Also, the impact on retailers and crime was being ignored, or at the very least, trivialised. As the bill was pushed through, the House erupted. I commend this bill to the House. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Don't know any lobbyists. Tobacco is the most harmful consumer product in New Zealand. It kills 50% of the people who use it. It is the leading preventable cause of death in New Zealand. It was making sure that our tamariki and our mokopuna, they don't grow up around cigarettes because we know that once they do, they are hooked. And what this government is actually doing is making it far more accessible. Despite smoking rates for rangatahi aged 18 to 24, more than halving in the last decade to 7%, it's still an issue. Do you have many friends that smoke? I do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some young people are using cigarettes to get off vaping as opposed to vaping to get off cigarettes because they don't like the taste of cigarettes, whereas vapes are quite sweet. So very real possibility that we will have more young people taking up cigarette smoking as well as vaping. Jackie Harema is the chief executive of Māori Public Health Group, Hapai Te Hauwara. It's just devastating that a government has put profit over people. I just think the harm that we're going to see for our whānau over the next um, generations is going to be horrific. It's blown out the time frame for Māori to reach smoke-free. So under the previous legislation that they repealed, the modelling suggested that um, Māori would have reached the target in 2026, 2027, um, but now 2040 is when they're looking to... Um, that modelling has suggested we will reach that target. The government insists they're still committed to meeting the smoke-free 2025 goal, which these whānau desperately want to see. 
I don't want my kids to be second generation smoker. It's a regression uh, backwards um, where we're trying to go forwards with it and be smoke free. So where do we go from here now? Joining us now is our panel of experts. They include former MP, former Mana Party leader and smoke-free advocate, Hone Harawira Karate uh, We're also joined now by the regional manager of Takiri Mai Tata Stop Smoking Service, Catherine Mannington Akwe. And also joining us is research fellow with the Department of Health at the University of Otago and co-director of Aspire Aotearoa Research Centre, Angarua Tēnā Koe Hoa. Tēnā Koe. mai. Tēnā koutou katoa. No mai da. What do you say, Hone, to this government who many believe has removed what is considered world-leading smoking legislation? Well, it's bullshit, quite frankly. I mean, it'd be different if they actually laid out their policy and says, this is what we're going to do, so we can scrap that. But they're just scrapping it and then you can make something up afterwards, something that's, uh, that Shane Reti has already admitted they're taking from uh, tobacco industry funded retailers, they're taking from innuendo about black market, they're taking it from non-evidence based research about crime. They, they don't have anything. All they're doing is killing the smoke free bill so they can hang on to that bloody tax to give to their mates who they promised all of these tax breaks, they didn't have the money for it, now they've got it. But the Associate Health Minister has said that they Which are still this, committed... Who's, who's this? this? is Casey Costello, who says they're still committed to an Aotearoa smoke-free 2025 nation, Aotearoa smoke-free 2025. Yeah, but if they take away this bill, what do they have? So they don't have one, do they? Have you heard what they've got there, um, Jules? Well, but, and, and this is the question, we though, haven't... isn't it? So this is the question. What is the impact? What is the impact on the ground, Catherine, of this move under urgency, so it didn't go to a select committee, didn't seek public feedback on what this coalition government has done? Well, it, says, it says quite a loud picture, doesn't it, about uh, the lack of value of our voices. We followed the process. We went to select committees. We, we put our written submissions in, and we echoed the voices of our people. And then we're told... Which it doesn't matter, we're going to repeal this, not for any other reason but because we have a deal with, with our partners, with our coalition partners. And what that will do on the ground, it, it sends a very clear picture, don't engage with us, don't come and talk to us when you want to co-design a, a, a programme that fits your needs and services that fit your needs, we will, we will design it for you. We don't know what that looks like. And yes, you've been very successful, but it's because the likes of us and our and those who have stood before us have stood beside the the government, successive governments, in designing programmes and designing things that fit our people. Not just previous governments, but also previous national governments. That's well. well, the national government, as Hone said, was you know they're, they're the architect mm. along alongside mm. uh, the likes. So they're the architect, mm. and how do you take down the building you built? You know that that's this this. Really quite um, confusing for our people. And, and the question comes to mind, was the smoke-free, the previous smoke-free Aotearoa 2025 policy, the policy introduced by the previous Labour government, was it working? Would it have achieved the goals expressed by Aotearoa smoke-free 2025? I think in terms of the smoking, it, it absolutely would have. It would have brought it down to very minimal levels. There was also the issue around vaping. But in terms of getting rid of the smoking, surely it would have, and I can't see anything that the government will introduce or make any difference to it now. So I don't, I don't think there is an alternate plan. I think the plan will come straight from the tobacco industry, if you ask me. OK, well, I'll pick up vaping in yeah. the next part. Let's come back to what you just said. People have said that this will cost lives. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yep, absolutely. So we know that um, cigarette um, smoking costs thousands of lives every year. Some of the modelling is predicted over up till 2040 that over 3,000 Māori lives would be saved and over 8,000 general population lives as well. So we know that you can quibble about how accurate that is, but it doesn't matter if it's 100, 200, 300, 400, how many lives need to be lost before you make some make a change. What do you say in response to a government that might say, well, those figures are, you know, they are quibbling numbers, they, they might not be true numbers. What do you say in response to a government that says something like that? And how do you respond when you hear that? We absolutely know right now people die and are harmed by cigarettes and all these other products. We know that Māori are being exploited in particular, so it's not just the health harm, 
it's the costs, it's the loss of our whānau, um, you know, in, in terms of production and just our social networks. We see it on our pai pai and all that sort of thing. So I think mm. it's a huge loss, and I am disgusted at what this government has done. But Honey, people will say, and it has been said, I think, by members of the panel themselves, mm. that actually the previous government policy wasn't exactly what Māori wanted. What they wanted was greater advocacy by Māori for Māori. Māori led tobacco policy. Sure. Sure, that, that's fine. Um, that's what we wanted, but you know we were prepared to help drive this one because it was pushing the numbers down. And at the end of the day, Māori-led policy and all the rest of it, we still wanted to see those numbers get down below the 5%. And the states say, the research says, that the policies that had been enacted by uh, Labour government were going to get us there. In terms of the numbers of people dying, you know, we laud the accomplishments of the Māori battalion. We mourn the loss of the 650 who died over there in that six-year World War II uh, period, more than that die, Māori, die every single year from tobacco. More than that die every single year from tobacco. This is a huge, it's a huge cope up and it's something that we've got to be doing something about. I mean, they talk about their 100-day plan. If the numbers are right, and we don't make up the numbers, they come from the Pākehā statistics. If the numbers are right, in the 100 days that they've been in, 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 in government, 200 Māori have lost their lives to tobacco. And they're doing nothing, absolutely nothing, to try and change their trajectory. We'll have more from our panel. Stay with us. We'll also talk about vaping. And we'll also talk about what the actions should be undertaken now in response to this government's policies on smoke-free legislation. That is coming up after the break. Kei tatunu mai. We have our panel with us. Uh, Catherine Manning and Anaru Wa talking smoke free legislation. Now, I said we were going to talk about vaping. I think we should talk about it here because it has been mentioned in dispatches by the Associate Health Minister that vaping has had an impact in terms of driving down and declining the rates or decreasing the rates of smoking in New Zealand. So, what about vaping? Isn't that something that can help, a free, uh, help uh, you know, achieve alternative? smoke-free 2025? No. Why not? Because we didn't ask to be addicted. We didn't ask... We didn't, there was, it wasn't an aspiration of ours to maintain addiction. What we asked for was to eliminate the harm that was being caused by the use of tobacco. So transferring onto another product, there is no doubt in, in our minds that it has helped some people quit vaping. But what it has also done is one vape into, into our whare, is, is a vape for our tamariki and our mokopuna. What, what are the rates on vaping? I mean, people say that it's at <laughs> epidemic <laughs> proportions. Mate, for Rangatahi Māori, is that true? Uh, 12, 13 years ago, we had to call all of our whānau to get out our kura and our senior school mm. to talk about how serious smoking was at our school. Now, it's exactly the same problem, but it's all vaping. It's it's a it's an absolute epidemic epidemic certainly within Māori rangatahi circles mm. all around, not just my kura, mm. all around the country um, and it's gotten a hold on on our kids in a worse way than bloody tobacco did because with tobacco you could smell it from a long way away this stuff all you can tell is a puff and it disappears and, and get got to get up close to smell whether it's candy or caramel. You know what I mean? Yep. But it's a huge epidemic, epidemic, and it's really hard to root out of there. We've got really 
awesome kids at Alcura. Best kids in the country, actually, but still. Well, I beg to differ. They're the, yeah. But still, <laughs> they've been they've been hooked into this, hooked into this. Um, into this uh, vaping, and it's addicting them. And, and I, I thought the science on vaping wasn't settled. The science on vaping is it's still the, the the science is still out on whether or how harmful vaping is. And we, there's vapes, and then we've got heat not burns, which is a different type of product. Then we've got oral tobacco. So there's a whole range of products that are potentially going to be on the market. We don't know the harm for vaping just yet, especially for our rangatahi. But we do know about 22, just over 22 percent of our rangatahi um, use vaping daily and that's three times higher than uh, non maori So even for among non maori it's high when you think about their smoking rates, it's about 1%, and for uh, rangatahi Māori, it's about 3%. So it's huge, and I think on a world scale, I heard recently that our vaping rate's amongst the highest in the world. It's, it's just out of control, and what we don't hear from the government is a recognition of these inequities. So among Māori, we have higher smoking rates. They say we're almost there for the smoke-free 2025 goal. It's 7 or 6 or 7% for the general population. It's still at 17 for Māori. It's colourblind policy. Vaping is a lot worse. And the government still says, though, that we have to recognise the impact that vaping has had. So what's your immediate response when you hear that? Then who has asked for it? Because we didn't ask for it. Yeah, look. If you look at every kura, as Honey said, yeah. everyone, ask any iwi, what is it we, 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 we want? Okay. We yeah. don't want addiction for our kids. Look, uh, the studies are only inconclusive because it hasn't been around long enough. Mm. But where it has been around long enough is in the United States. And this we do know from the United States experience. Um, vaping, vapes have the same harmful and toxic chemicals as cigarettes. Mm. They are un, they're even more unregulated and more addictive than cigarettes because there's no control mechanisms over the use of, of nicotine. They can still cause stroke heart attack and heart disease, they can harm the respiratory system, they can cause gum, mouth, throat diseases. This is stuff we're getting from, from the United States. They can cause cancer and they do affect the brains of brain development of under 25s. Big tobacco, mm -hmm. here's the other thing, big tobacco getting smashed in, in smoking is buying up all of the vaping companies. So they're leading that as well. They are opposing the vaping regulations in all of the states in exactly the same way they opposed smoking. Yep. And the one other thing is, is now 40 states out of 52 in the US that have introduced legislation to, to, to ban the use of vaping. The, the accusation many have said is that this government has been captured by lobbyists, and in particular lobbyists, on behalf of big companies, tobacco companies. Yeah, tobacco. But they say that's not true, Honey. They say it's not true. I don't see transparency in this government. We know that the Speaker of the House has actually closed down <coughs> on disclosing who the lo lobbyists are. I know Honey and his time in, in Parliament, and I'm sure he also have something to say about it, would have seen a lot of lobbyists coming through those doors, and those doors are, are those lobbyists aren't public health people. Yeah. Catherine? And he just has to ask, who is asking for these policies? Because mm. the community isn't asking. Yeah. It isn't coming from anywhere else. And when asked the question, and I heard it in the House, who has asked for this? These, are, these, are, these crickets. The, the government also says that its amendments now, this policy that has been passed into law, also removes the threat of danger to isolated dairies and shops who are selling tobacco yeah, that would drive a black market. Yeah, no, what, why is it rubbish, Warnie? It's rubbish because Shane Ritty has taken the advice of those of those dairy owners who happen to be, and you can see it at the bottom of the the protest signs, funded by the tobacco industry. You know, the tobacco retailers who are kicking up all of this fuss, oh, it's going to be crime, da 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 da, da. They brought a march to Wellington. Hello, we thought, where, do they, where can these little dairy owners afford to do that? Actually, they're funded by the tobacco industry. So Shane Reti has taken his advice from dairy owners who are funded by the tobacco industry. So that's the first thing. The other one about the black market is just, it's just, a, it's just a, a statement. No research, no evidence. Mm. The police aren't saying it. Nobody's saying it. Just the government. So they're, they're throwing stuff out there that has no basis in reality. It's an old tobacco industry argument. Mm. We've it's heard it time and time again. Mm. Yeah, look, my colleagues call it zombie arguments. So they come up, it's how the tobacco industry playbook. There's been research that looked at the illicit market and it does, it's, if anything, it's reducing. Overseas evidence suggests that tobacco on the mar illicit market is usually put in there by the industry itself anyway. Yeah. Catherine, what do we do now? I mean, we know this government uh, supports every partnership boards. It's certainly done that now yeah. with Te Akawhaeora and, and, and now that's gone. But it, it still believes in many we partnership boards. It says it wants to work with iwi. Is that an avenue by which we can get advocacy 
on behalf of Māori, particularly when it comes to Aotearoa Smoke Free 2025? Our people have to speak up. They have to have a voice about what it is they need. And, I mean, the Whanau Water Services, which I work for, you know, that, that's our one-stop shop and where, where we talk about the whole person. Smoking's not the issue for our people when they walk through our door. It, there's a multitude of, multi-layers of issues that they come through our doors for. Mm -hmm. And I think seeing them and valuing who they are first before you start looking at the drivers that made them come through our door is really the solution, you know, making sure services are well funded. Actually, the government uh, well resource well our enforcement agencies, our clients. You want to say you want to put a stop to the single sales and the other stuff that's going on in our community? I know see, uh, controlled purchase um, uh, operations are happening throughout our community and they're breaching all the time, weekly. So put resources into our enforcement officers. Make sure they can do their job and do their job well. Protect our communities. Thank you very much for being a part of our panel here tonight. Really appreciate it. After the break, taking the past into the future through Tuku Tuku. Hoki Mayano e Hoama, taking the traditional forward. Tehiku Otega descendant Afina Murupainga has built a thriving online business, selling kits for making your own tsukutsuku panels. Under the mentorship of her queer, she's helping to revive the traditional art practice, which was at threat of being lost 50 years ago. But Afina is doing it in her own style. Mene Te Puro, Amiliana Johnson. I have always wanted to run my own business and be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I had some pretty, like, big goals. Afina Murupainga wasn't always so sure of herself. I wasn't the person I am now. Ten years ago, I was, like, quite closed and, you know, I was lost. I had heaps of skills and heaps of dreams, but didn't know which one I wanted to pursue or follow through on. West Auckland, born and raised, and third generation urban Māori. So, growing up in Tāmaki, did you know much about home? Did you know much about Ahipara? Not at all. They were just words that I had learnt to recite for my pepeha. But I didn't know the ripples of our moana and the hope blowing of Te Wairua. I didn't know, they were just words. And then I'd get a phone call from Ahipara, from one of my best friends, who asked me to move home and run our art gallery on our marae. Ahipara, nestled in the far reaches of the winterless north. Population, 1,200. It was a huge culture shock for me to move home. I had grown up in the city of busyness, everything at your disposal. And um, I would move back to Ahipara. And the isolation was deafening. But she also found something the city couldn't give her. Moving home at 25, if I had moved home at 35, 45, 55, 65, I would have missed out on that many queer kaumātua. 
meeting them, hearing their stories. Fire Pareote Nathan, an expert weaver, took Afina under her wing. Why did you choose Afina to mentor? Did you see something in her? <laughs> she just came up here as a teenager and she wanted to live the marae life because she had been brought up in Auckland. She had the rail and everything else, but she wanted real grassroots stuff. Just above the pene, yep. It takes teamwork to weave tukutuku. You have two people working together, and it's got to be people who get work together. <laughs> <laughs> you have one in the front and one in the back. The one in the front, they drive the pattern. Below it. And the one at the back, just guide it from the back. This is the gallery Afina was called home to run, opened in 2010. When we set this place up, we we're putting it out there to market their wares so they get something back. They responded to the need for employment in a really remote area. Learning about the entrepreneurial ahua within my tupuna was such a cool, cool experience. While running the gallery, Afina was also teaching tukutuku in schools. Then COVID hit three years ago, and inspiration struck to package her workshop into a craft kit for people to do at home. Over the next two months, she would build a social media presence before launching Fatu Creative. I would sell out 200 tickets in one hour and make $26,000, which was a lot of money. That would have been more money than I had made in that whole year. We had to come up with a real quick way to mass make these kits, because there was obviously a demand. I had to draw on all my bado and friends to start our business. You're going to go through the front, just in the top corner. As a Māori business, there are unique challenges. Because I had a huge fear when I started my Instagram page, like, oh my God, I'm like profiting off my of Māori, people are going to hate me. The commercial use of Māori language, designs and symbols has become a hot topic in recent years. I think it's when you forget where you got that mātauranga in your pakihi journey that you might get swayed by traditional business values. Just like you get an accountant, a lawyer, just like you seek those out, it should be the same to find experienced Māori practitioners to guide you in your mahi. Two years on from launch and Fatu is going strong. I've had like 0.01% of bad feedback. Afina is one of seven female business owners from Aotearoa selected for a global entrepreneur program. She's received a $100,000 boost to her small business. So with that investment, what are you hoping to do with Fatu? The main use of that putea will be to see Fatu creative in most shops. I would like to be the leading Māori creative product sort of seller. And she's not stopping there. When you're raised by these bold women, um, you sort of pick up a few of their traits as well. I want to build more Te Whare Whiri Toy and ultimately a central hub to uh, build an Indigenous art school. And she's backed by her own, who are happy to see the traditional art form given new life. And I know it'll never be lost because they're here carrying it through. Coming up next week on the Hui. Fatal dog attacks in Northland. I just think about how scared he would have been. They were big dogs and he was a small man. He had no chance. Animal rescues at breaking point. We have no power to do anything. So we just go back to the same brick wall and bang our head against it. Are authorities stepping up? I think council is doing as much as council can do at the moment. Shut up and listen to our people, what they're saying. These are going to be changed. 
that's next week on the Hui. You can find our stories on all our usual social media pages and platforms or indeed at newshub.co.nz. Join us next week for more. Kia mau, ki te tūranga, o tapu tapu a te, hau mi e, hui e, taiki e. Nā te puna whakatonga rewa, te hui i tautoko.